This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. This conference will now be recorded. Yes, please start the session if you are ready. I'll just... Yeah. So, you also spoke a lot about ANC ROC curve yesterday. And uh, first of all, what I think is that uh, we can draw that curve and then uh, post drawing that curve. Uh, we will check for the other things. Then we will see if we will talk about that. So, Nitish, can you please make me the presenter? Yeah. Okay. So, basically, we will also talk about the AUC ROC curve and uh, things like uh, uh, this. Let me open Spider, the ID that we are going to use, and uh, based on that ID, we are going to check for it. Okay. Based on the ID, we are going to check for it. I will start writing the code for our uh, random call classifier. Yeah. Panda is one of the most important libraries that we are going to use always in Python. It's for uh, data frame and uh, sorry, uh, data. Yeah, data frame basically one of the most important action in. Uh, 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 the pandas library that we quite often use. So that is going to be the one thing, one important thing. Okay, so I will be just importing the library at the start. Okay? Import patch plot okay? Dot by plot. Then, as I told you, that uh, for random forest, we already have the libraries imported. I mean, libraries already existing in uh, Python. So, if that is the case, if that is the case, then probably it's a lot more easier that we directly import that library rather than. Uh, Doing anything. Okay. So once one is the ROC AUC score, as we were speaking about today, uh, yesterday on it, we are going to draw the curve for AUC ROC score as well, and uh, we will see that how that curve uh, uh, goes. And uh, again, So I think this is just for warning, and uh, probably we, what we want is that our warnings to be ignored. We want our warnings to be ignored. Okay, this was. All the importing of libraries and the warnings that we want to know as of now. Then next comes is
Now we are going to read the CSV file that we have. What is the CSV file that we have? Let's check that file first as well. Before we uh, go deep into it, one second, on the file. Now we have the file. It's a nifty data or a historical data that I've taken mostly from 2014 till November 2019. So it's a good amount of data that we are going to use for our random forest classification. The beauty of good amount of data is of course going to be that uh, it's a five year data. That is one thing. And the good part about this data is that when we are going to plot the curve uh, using this data, the better results are of course expected. If we include the if I include the data for uh, this 2020 period, wherein we saw a lot of uh, uh, surge in market, a lot of change in market, probably I wanted to avoid that to be included as in the uh, I mean webinar session, but of course you can add that data also. And get some more significant results out of it. But yeah, this is what I have taken. I will need two features from this data. As we discussed yesterday, that we, we make features and then based on features only, we do the uh, our uh, thing. So, what are our features? That also we are trying to see. Basically, what I have taken as a, as a feature. Is open minus slope is one feature that I'm taking, and high minus slope that is another feature that I will take. So, based on these two features, I will do the random forest classification. I will come down to the result that we want to see. Now, because I'm going to take open minus slope, because I'm going to take open minus slope and uh, I minus mean, group. That is the reason that we expect that we expect open minus group and high minus group. That is the reason that we expect that our uh, uh, random forest analysis will be a classification and not a regression. I told you yesterday that. Uh, we do a classification and not a regression. Why classification and not regression? Because regression will give us exact results and classification will give us our basic details, right? Classification will give us only basic details. What are the basic details? Whether the market will go up or down, that kind of thing, a simple straightforward thing. It won't give us significant amount of uh, other relevant information. So, yes, first of all, leave that. Yes. D underscore DX underscore D underscore data set. What we are trying to do here is that we are trying to read that 
csv file that we had and get the four columns out of it open i I know no. these are the data set that I'm going to get. Okay. Now my task is to create the two features that I was already uh spoke about. So basically, I will create feature one that is out of this data only. Open minus close is one feature that I am trying to take. This is one of the uh, things that I have already done. And the one feature that I have already created. Then the other is the next one. And no. So basically, we are just going to drop the any values that we have in between. It's very easy to handle in machine learning cases. And that's another beauty of random forest. That I mean it's an advantage of random forest that it helps us in creating this data set <laughs> with the non-registered values all the being out of it. Now we'll create the train data. Creating train data. X is equal to D X not L O P. Okay, so the two features have created the data.
mais um pouquinho. Okay, this is the end uh, theta and the same data that you get. That's the same data, same data. That we are trying to create over. Yeah. Why is our target variable or the output variable? Which is the close price that we are trying to take. So this line is about the close price that we are trying to take. Okay. Just one thing to add. Probably uh, in today's uh, overall session, we are going to implement random forest, but there will be many much questions that you might be having. Why this is written as closed? Why this is shift is written? So basically, we can explain all of them, but that will require a lot of time. So I would rather focus more on results part, that what results we are seeing, than explaining these small small things. I think I hope that is fine with you. Just to get more glimpse of what is shift, what is uh, this greater than you, and there are other things that I'm going to write. Probably that will require, I think, an, at least a session of three to four hours where we can cover each and everything in detail. That why it is written, why that is so. Excuse me, if I'm not going to answer those questions mainly. But definitely, from the implementation perspective, we are going to see the Better thing out of it. I'm creating explain and white thing. So the data before split and after split. Okay, now on this plain data and test data, first of all, what is percentage split? As I showed you yesterday in the PPT, there can be any number. See, it's all the plain data should be greater than test data. Now it's up to us how much percentage of data we want to split as plain data and how much of it we want to. Let's 
I think you must be already aware of what is estimator and number of estimators that you should be using is 10. So that's like a feature within random forest classifier. Bootstrap, whether we should be doing using bootstrap or not, that is again something that we should be fine with. We want bootstrapping to happen. And the maximum features that we are going to take. Right. Now, if you see, you can get all these variables written when you can see that okay, random forest classifier. If I'm using so basically, you can see n estimators, how much number you can use, what is maximum features where you can use, and all these kind of things. Okay, for okay. Basically, you can do all these features and based on all these features, you can definitely try to get the details that you want. The maximum features, of course, that we want is the square root. The square root. That we will be using the classifier. Then what we will do is that in our model, we will fit We are going to fit in uh, uh, these values. Thank you, Margaret. Two more than two. And that was the error level coming because of the bit max. We are fitting in the train data and the, in the model that we have built up. Now, coming to the ROC, these are the most important, one of the most important things that we are talking about yesterday. ROC value is equal to your ROC AUC term that we have already 
ROT AP4 that we already got in from previous data. That is Y underscore train and T underscore This is the ROT Now we have to print the value that we have. Okay. Now we have to print the value that we have got from the ROC curve. Okay. These are the values okay, that we are going to get out of the ROC curve. That is one positive rate, two positive rate. These are the things. Okay. That we already discussed yesterday also, I told you that okay, what is called what, what is true positive rate is sensitivity that we spoke about. Someone also called that recall is the one which is sensitivity. We have the, the true positive rate. The code that I'm writing, of course, is quite exhaustive. You need not necessarily that you understand everything, but just for the sake of, I mean, I'm writing the exhaustive code so that at any point of time when you learn it, probably you should be able to see it. Okay. I've created those variables, and based on those variables, I'm trying to. Okay. ROC curve and ROC AUC curve is both. Both the things have been already done. Okay. We can see that parameters are there and what is the Y score? That is already within the ROC curve. If you see just over it over it, over it over it this time, and you can see that what all this is doing.
these are the values for the score that we are printing. So means the RF score that we are printing. Now, what is our next step? Our next step is doing the plot for most of the things that we have already done. Plotting for most of the things that we have already done. Plot the true positive rate, the false positive rate. Open equal to. The codes are a bit complex. I can understand the fact that the codes are a bit complex and uh, I mean, uh, might be difficult to understand. But I mean, that's what that sort of the reality is. I think uh, the machine learning codes are always going to be a bit complex only. With, uh, yeah, that, that thing uh, uh, within them. We are going to plot the AUC ROC code, which is this AUC dot. This is this, and we put the X table as
This is the signal that you are going to get. Now, what we are going to do apart from this is that after the signal is created, now we will create a strategy. What is about strategy? Now, where did this, this come from? What we want to do is that we want to create a strategy wherein the returns of the strategy will be based on the predicted signal. Predicted signal will give us the returns of the strategy. Let's first of all create that. Whatever the returns from the Nifty multiplied by the signal that our is giving us, our, our thing is giving us. Okay. So now we are going to plot the strategy return and the fifty return.
this is where I think uh, the overall course ends with uh, the code is without error. I understand that there must be multiple things that uh, would have gone inside your mind, especially regarding this line, I think. So maybe before a lot of questions arise around this line, let me write it down. That some of the things that we are already, we already know about. That is, first of all, what is an, an estimator? And then this for estimator. Are number of trees in forest. This default value for n number of n estimators, the total number of trees that you want in our forest. Trees means yesterday I showed you, right? That there are the samples within that the decision trees are there. How many number of decision trees that you want to create? Yesterday I showed you that the number of trees that we create, uh, basically, as this is the latest version of Python, this number is quite high, 600. Otherwise, previously it used to be 10. So number of trees means number of. If you recall, yesterday I showed you in the uh, page that okay, uh, basically, uh, topmost is there. Within that, we are classifying multiple feature based on features, and then for each feature we are creating different decision trees. So the number of trees that you create. Is this an estimator? Okay. Then the other thing that we included was bootstrap. So when we say bootstrap is what you do, we are saying that bootstrap samples are used when building trees. Bootstrap is what you do. Bootstrap is what you means. We are allowing bootstrap samples. When right? we are allowing bootstrap samples, when we need three. And the next is that features. This number of features to computer and looking for the best. Okay. But again, it's not a number, right? If you see. But it's not a number. Basically, it is that we are defining what is the formula that we should use for max features. So basically, in this case, it is square root. If I define max features equal to integer, then max features will be that integer number. Basically, it will be dividing into integers. If I am de defining it as square root, it will be that max features will be based on the square root of numbers that they are going to create. So max feature is about giving the formula. Both number of features that you should consider. Number of features to consider. And number of features to consider should not be just 10, 12, that is fine. But which is the approach? So basically, is it an integer? Is it an auto number? If you would say auto, then it is automatically square root 2. It is a log 2 of the total number of features that we are defining. So max features can also be log of 2 of 
and n underscore feature. So basically any formula or any number that you want to give to the max feature thing. I think we are already running out of time. So let me run the code. Okay. So now the error that we are getting is that file doesn't exist. Just give me a moment, I will create a folder and you create the file there. Actually, I didn't want to show this folder and location, but yeah, these, these are the folder locations where I'm having this NSE file, and I'm going to save our code also here. One second. That's something, bit of uh, stuff that we are trying to, I mean, the part of stuff that I'm trying to avoid where I'm sharing my code, I'm saving my code in my machine, but that's where, at a location, that is the location where I'm sharing my code, it can be any location where you will be putting up your code and you can put the NSE data also over there. It is also your choice. I am saving the code as random for us. Random for us classifier. And now we should run the code, and that code that I will run will not give me any error, right? The code that I will run will not give me any error. Why it will not give me any error now? Because this NSC file is saved there, which I showed you. Now these are the data that we had. And I think I, we all will be more worried and more concerned about the plots that we are going to get. That's another error that I'm getting. Give me a moment there. Yeah? Just...
think so and it's written basically something that uh, i think uh, i have not even defined here that's there let me see something that i have not defined also here something else is This is the NSC return. Hmm. NSC returns column. This we haven't even defined from there for the error. So after a lot of errors, I think we got it right. Uh, apology for these errors, I think it took some of the odd 10 minutes. But while writing this overall code, uh, one, I think uh, these are some of the, like, you, you saw the predicted signal was the, I, I typed it incorrectly. And uh, I just missed putting up NSC returns over here. These are some of the small, small errors that happened. But yeah, finally, this is the code, which I will save it as, and save plot. I will save these two plots and then probably we can individually go and see them. What are they? I'll just open it up here. Yeah? I'll just open it up. So now this is the this is the return plot in red that we have, and this is the strategy return plot that we have. It's more so about the direction only. Of course, it is going in very uh, different directions. Just uh, one mind predictive signal. Just if, go, if, if it goes in one error, probably it will give a lot of issues. So I can understand that uh, the graph is not that clear in terms of. But at points, if you see at this point, I think all across this patch, all across this patch, it is going in a direction that is close to this, that is as much close to at what the Nifty returns are happening. And as I told you, it is a signal only. So don't worry that, okay, if it's going in way ahead direction, it's not that your strategy is going to get down so much different. The only thing is that just at this point, probably the predictive signal went wrong. And if the predictive signal went wrong, probably the gap is coming. Otherwise, if you see here, your predicted signal is going correctly because the this graph versus this graph, they are quite 
interestingly matching as to where, where, we are, where, where we are going. Again, but at this end, so there are areas of force where it is not totally matching in terms of signal, but there are areas as well where it is totally matching. And if you see at this AUC or OC score, then here it is that this true positive rate versus false positive rate is, uh, I mean, uh, plotted. And based on that, it is taken up. So we have extracted this information from the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, true positive rate, and we have drawn it from graph. But in case if it is not drawn from the graph, AUC and ROC curves are almost mostly about the ROC curve is plotted with TPR again, SPR, which is again the same thing that I have done. So this line in green is something called as the ROC curve, true positive rate again, false, false positive rate. This is what the ROC curve that is. And your line in black, that is random, which is line in black, is your AUC. So AUC is all about how much zero to one correctly you are predicting. And ROC is about how much shift that you're having between TPR and SPR. Now the more RFP, the more this green line goes outside it, the better the result is. Okay, that's where the difference, the better the result is, the more uh, ROC curve goes beyond it. And this AUC line, I mean, let it be the way it is probably. The better it is, the degree. So ROC is basically the probability curve, and AUC represents the measure of separ separability. Okay. So basically, AUC tells us that how much our code can differentiate between classes, the classes that we have in our. That is it. I will stop here, and uh, I think uh, there must be some questions and. Uh, Probably, yeah, this is the code. I think the code will only anyway be shared with the class, and you guys can of course follow it up for any nifty data that you want. So, Nitesh, I will pass it on to you now. I think we already have extended a lot of time. Please take it. Thanks. Thanks once again, Rupal, uh, uh, for this uh, detailed session showing the implementation of Python in Python. <clears throat> for the random voice method. I don't see any question in the chat window. Uh, so participants, uh, as we have done yesterday, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in the chat window. Or in case there are not many questions today, then, I mean, we can open the session for discussion. You can speak up also one by one. Hello. <clears throat> yes, Nivas, right? Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, uh, Rupal. Thanks for your wonderful present, uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, but I have a doubt. Uh, why um, uh, test and uh, drain split function has not been used? Because uh, usually, if you give the percentage of uh, split, usually takes the samples in random way. That is what it is desired. Uh, but here, while splitting between the test data and the train data, it was not being used. So basically, between, so basically splitting is all about you have the whole data, and within that whole data, mm. you are trying to split that data mm. into train. So this is your test data. This is your train data. This is seventy percent of your yeah, but, but, total data. Mm. Yeah. But usually, but, but usually, uh, if you use random uh, split, that that is what desirable because here you are giving the sequence starting from the first point to uh, start uh, to the end of 70, 70th point you are giving the training, and from seventy one to hundred point you are giving the test. But usually, uh, ran giving random data is uh, much more required, right? While training and testing, that is what model selection uh, train test split function does. Okay, but we have to give some percentage to what amount of data should be taken mm -hmm. as uh, train and what amount of data should be taken as split. That is one thing that a percentage mm -hmm. needs to be defined. And here, if you mm -hmm. see, I have not used date column anywhere. If you see, I have not used date column anywhere. Why? 
collating the data for test and uh, train. So that in itself shows that my data is independent of uh, date. If I uh, want to switch the data in any format and then take it as train and test data, that is also fine. So just see that in our data that we have prepared, I'm not using data as that such that okay, open and close and high and low. Now it is coming as in format of date only, that's our choice that I have made. But not necessarily that as you said, you have to follow it and a particular pattern that okay, it should be a across date only. It can be random date only or random data only. We are most mostly worried about our X and Y only contains the open and close, open minus close and high minus low. This is the only thing that our data contains, if you see. The X part contains only open minus close and high minus close. That it doesn't contain date that defines which direction the data should be moving. But but the thing is in this case in this scenario uh, if you see the list x train is equal to x of uh, colon uh, colon split so basically it is a list so it it follows the sequence right uh, and you know that when you when you find the high end high end low difference and as well as open and close difference uh, you are having the effect of the previous day and you are having uh, in the third day on the third day you are having the effect of previous two days so it is kind of sequence only right so here the random randomness is not being followed that's what i understood all, May, yeah what is going to happen in market tomorrow is in effect of what has happened yesterday okay, uh -huh. what uh -huh. has happened in past two days will not be reflecting tomorrow in the market let's be very sure about it that's the basic assumption that we are having that any day is irrespective of what has happened in previous days. And with that assumption, if you sequence it in dates and then take it, or that's what I'm saying. Before creating this X, you can very well put it here that uh, sort the data in order of open minus close and then take this data. That is also fine. Sort the data and then take it. Okay. You can change the format also, it's not necessarily. It's just that I have taken it this way. But it's okay. not a, change the data also and uh, uh, get that random all. Okay. And last question, like in this plot, like you have NSC returns versus strategy returns. So can we say that actually both are in uh, opposite directions? If one curve is going in the upper direction, the other curve is going in the opposite direction. Not always. At the end, at the end, this point. Yeah. But 70% of the time, except in the small yes, patch, except, uh, yeah. Yes, sometimes it is going in opposite direction, and sometimes it is going in right direction. So that's why I told you, it's a classification problem where it predicted signal. Only one hmm. wrong predict signal can make your curve look like very odd. You know, it's a one in market, and it's a minus one in your strategy. And the data is just gone. If it's a day for high return, it will just be gone, right? So that is the why, even for a one small wrong predict signal, you will get a lot of noise in the graph that we are having. So can't we can't we say that like let's just suppose if I have uh, highest, I mean uh, you you have AUC almost equal to one, but still there is there is mismatch between the NSC returns and strategic returns. So is it desirable even though you have better classification? We can have better but still, the ratings are not matching. We can have better classification in terms of parameters that we are defining here. Change the parameters and the curve will get better. That is what I okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, th thank, thanks, Mr. Rupal. Great. Uh, thanks. Uh... Any other question? I don't see any other question in the chat window. So if there is any other question, you can speak up as well. Hello. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, this is Karan, right? Yes, uh, uh, sir, uh, you have yes, taken sir. the maximum feature as a, a square root. So can it be taken as an integer? It can be taken as integer, yes. You can define it as int, int, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. 
Okay. And we have the number. I'm not going to change the code here much because it will take a lot of time, but yeah, you can change it to any. All right. Uh, thanks, Karan, for the qu query and thanks, Rupal, for answering that. Any other qu question that uh, the, any of the participants has? As I said, you can speak up as well. So if there is no other question, then actually we would uh, close the session. Uh, anybody, anyone has any other question? All right, then uh, let's close the session today. Hello? Okay. Hello? No Hello? Yes, no yes, sir. yes, please. So I'm not yes, that uh, proficient with uh, Python. Uh, so can you explain uh, the returns, NSE returns part? W what is what, what is it telling the the sum? This is very good accumulative sum. Yesterday's return plus today's return plus like, as you move on, you are adding the returns of previous days. That is sum sum. And when you are calculating returns here, it is the close of today, you add by close of yesterday. That is the calculation of return. Return, return formula. Okay, thank you, sir. Great. Any other question? Any anybody else has any other question? Okay, so it seems uh, no more question for the day. Then uh, let's uh, close the session for the day. Rupal, thank you so much once again for taking your time out and uh, uh, doing this uh, workshop for us. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much. And to all the participants as well, thank you all for taking your time out on the weekend. Uh, yeah, I understand two days during the weekend, but I hope uh, it was a time well spent and hope you all uh, benefited from the workshop. So we would all we would like to have your feedbacks and uh, we would also send you access to the session recordings as well as uh, all the materials, the the the, no, no, the Python codes the presentations over um, email. Yeah, no, uh, anything else so, you want to ask? So we can create these uh, nifty uh, CSV files on ourselves also. Like if if I want to uh, make a file for two days or how, how to make the data for like Get the question, yeah. Nupur, if you can kindly repeat the question, I think uh, it was not audible properly to Rupur. So, if I want to uh, use the data, if I want to create my own data, uh, can I make the NSC CSV file? Yes, 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 yes. Of course, you can download it from internet and create the file as for whatever you are telling So, what the file that I have taken, a file. Directly downloaded from internet. I didn't want to change or tweak the file much so that someone wants to replicate the code. You just need to download the file from internet and use the same file. This is the format of the file if you get it from Yahoo Finance. Please also get this uh, file. Yes, yes.
All right. So does that answer your question, Nupur? Uh, so we will be attempting to close the session for the third time. So Nupur, in case you have any other question or anybody else, if they if they have any other question, please uh, feel free. Okay, I think uh, yeah, let's let's close the session now. Thanks once again, Rupal. Thanks everybody for attending. And as I said, uh, we look forward to your feedbacks, and uh, we would also send you access to the. A link to access the materials and the lecture sessions uh, as well. Uh, so, thank you once again, everyone. Bye bye. Take care.